Welcome to Autodrix. So I'm going to be talking about this great new feature that was part of the release of 21.4, which is called Named Entity Recognition. Named Entity Recognition is a machine learning task which enables you to extract information from text um, and be able to identify this in predefined categories, such as whether that is a person, an organisation, a location, or even things like monetary values. Um, on the screen, I've got the sort of Wikipedia definition of what that is. But let's have a look at what this means when you've got some text. So here we've just got a very simple sentence that last week Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, announced that he had successfully flown to space using his Blue Origin rocket. And what the named entity recognition tool has done is identified within this body of text the entities it's able to extract. So it's identified that last week is referenced in a date. Jeff Bezos is a person, Amazon is an organisation, and also that Blue Origin is an organisation. And you could obviously do um, some of this with um, like a lookup. So do a find and replace and say, if I've mentioned like last week, append onto my data, that that's a date field that I'm referencing or a time period, look up Jeff Bezos. But then you would need like a huge, huge sort of lookup table if you were doing this across a body of text. And also, um, named entity recognition can also kind of um, get the context um, to identify things. Um, so this is a great way of getting um, information out of documents, and you might be able to use this for um, classifying types of documents or trying to find are there mentions of people in these bodies of text, etc. Um, so in Alteryx, um, they are using a Python package called Spacey. Um, I recommend that you read up about Spacey. Um, so just like, type into Google Spacey and you'll find the documentation around it. There'll be loads of blogs about um, people um, talking about how they've used Spacey. Um, but as with any machine learning exercise, there are known limitations and it won't be 100% accurate. So an example of this is if the data is trained on um, data that contains more references about Amazon being a company instead of the river Amazon, then it's likely to identify mentions of Amazon more likely to be a company than a river. Um, the same applies for like apples, so apple the company and apples in an orchard. But just um, to show you how this works in Alteryx, I'm going to jump into Alteryx. So here in Alteryx, if we take a look at this data, we've got um, an input text file where I've got some um, sentences and then I have the named entity recognition tool. This sits under the text mining tap palette. It's called named entity recognition. And if you right click on it, you can go to the help documentation and read up on that. In terms of the configuration, we need to select the language and also select the column which has the text in it. And then when we run this workflow, we can then look at the output and we can see that we get some new fields here. So we've got entities, which is a JSON output. And then we've got the entity diagram, which is shown here on the left hand side. So this is the HTML showing you the labeled um, entities. So we can see here, Apple has been recognized as an organization. Um, yesterday, Fred, as a person, went to the orchard to pick up his favorite Apple. Um, and Apple there hasn't been recognized as an organization. But then if you look at the examples here with Amazon, like I said, in terms of like the known limitations of this, you've got Amazon here where it's quite clear talking about a river, but you you can understand that it might be talking about something that's not a company because it's also identified um, Brazil here as a country. But then we've also got Amazon as founded by Jeff Bezos as a person um, in the next bit. So if we look at what we could do here with passing this out, so using this JSON data, if I just open up this tool container, zoom out so you can see that a bit better what I've done is I've passed out the JSON and then cross tab the data so I now have a table here showing my text and then the recognized entity so we've got the dates the countries the organizations and the persons and you can then use that downstream to um, do a bit of um, classification so 
where you might have misidentified organizations. So in the example, like Amazon and um, be in the river, but you've also got country, you could create rules and sort of say, if you've recognized the organization as Apple, sorry, as Amazon, but there's also a country or you've recognized Amazon, but and it's also Jeff Bezos, you can be more certain that that is definitely Amazon, the company. And then in terms of another example, so what I've got here, I'll just um, close this tool container so you don't need to look at this to start with. We've got here some dialogue. So I've downloaded this from um, Kaggle um, and it's dialogue from the Harry Potter films. And we can see here, I've also got an input file which has the characters. I've just labeled these as um, wizards. I, I know strictly speaking, they're not all wizards. Um, but within um, the name entity recognition tool, same thing here of setting up the language and the text, but I've also said that I want to train with new entities. So I can take this and use the pre-trained models, um, but for something that's very specific here, as an example, Harry Potter films, I'm, it might not necessarily pick up all of the characters um, correctly. So I can train it now. So within this, I can set that my entities are in the entity column and my labels are in the label column. And then there's some um, user inputs around how you want to train it around epochs. And if you hover over the um, question mark, it gives you some details around what an epoch is, whether you want the model to stop early and the batch size. I've just set these to run this a bit quicker. Um, so training this model here took 26 minutes. Um, and I've got 26 uh, characters in the data. And what I want to do is label them as wizards. So I can look in my outputs here and we can see, okay, yes, the um, pre-trained model already had things like Dumbledore and recognized it as a person, but it was recognizing like Albus um, potentially as a country, Hagrid it wasn't correctly identifying either. But I can then use the wizards um, and if I pass this data out like I did before. I can have a look at the results. And I can see here in all of the bodies of text when particular characters or wizards were mentioned. So I can see here in the wizards, so if I just filter this data and remove the empty. So I can see that it's mentioned Harry Potter here and that's in a body of text where it says it can't be Harry Potter and that's in my wizard column. So I can see here, these are all the people that I've um, trained the model on. So as an example, you've got the Albus Dumbledore um, and it's quite clearly identified here that Albus Dumbledore is a wizard. So hopefully that gives you a good sort of demonstration of how you can use named entity recognition. Um, I think it's gonna be really powerful um, and I love the fact that within all tricks, it's just a drag and drop tool. You, you don't have to worry about um, dependencies, installing packages, understanding documentation around that package. It's two simple things most of the time. It was set in the language and the field that contains that text. Thank you for watching. Click here to watch more and here to subscribe.